His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, President of the Supreme Defense Council, chaired the Council's meeting at Khir Palace. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Council reviewed the outcomes of His Royal Highness's successful official visit to the United States, which featured signing the Comprehensive Security, Integration and Prosperity Agreements between the two countries. The Bahrain-U.S. Pact aims to enhance the long-standing cooperation between the two friendly countries towards more unprecedented levels of bilateral integration and the security, military, modern technology, trade and investment fields. It also contributes to strengthening the security of economic systems between the two countries and region, which will open up wider horizons for development. His Majesty commended the efforts exerted by His Royal Highness to ensure the success of the U.S. visit. His Majesty also praised the continuous humanitarian contributions of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, led by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, his Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, citing the RHF's provision of urgent relief aid to those affected by the earthquake and floods in Morocco and Libya, expressing pride in all those who contributed to the relief operations and ensured their success. His Majesty paid tribute to the BDF, the National Guard, and the Ministry of Interior for their tireless efforts and constant keenness to carry out their patriotic duties with unrelenting courage and determination to safeguard the homeland and defend the gains and security of the citizens. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, sent a cable congratulations to the SCW member and Injaz Bahrain Board of Directors Chairperson, Her Highness Sheikha Hassa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa, on receiving the Social Work Pioneer Medal among a number of pioneering GCC figures who were honored for the great and influential efforts in this important field. Her Royal Highness noted that this achievement affirms Her Highness's sincere efforts, hard work, and impressive results in the field of volunteer work, and noted her remarkable contributions to the development of the awareness, skills, and capabilities of Bahraini youth in the field of entrepreneurship within the scope of Her Highness's distinguished leadership in Injaz Bahrain. Her Royal Highness also praised the qualitative experience that Her Highness brings to the work process of the SCW, which helps the Council in advancing Bahraini women and the sustainability of their progress. Her Royal Highness wished Her Highness continued success in serving the Kingdom. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, unveiled that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will patronize DP World International Golf Tour, said to be hosted by the Kingdom on February 1st to the 4th of 2024. His Highness was speaking during the announcement event attended by GSA Deputy Chairman His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and CEO of DP World International Golf Tour Keith Bailey. His Highness expressed sincere thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his patronage of the event, which reflects constant keenness to support the sports movement and the Kingdom's efforts to host a variety of international events, which contributes to enhancing its status on the international sports map. He affirmed Bahrain's pride in hosting this prestigious international golf tournament at the Royal Golf Club. Expressing confidence in the tour's success, he stressed that hosting this championship will enhance Bahrain's status and highlight its capabilities in organizing international sporting events, affirming commitment to supporting and developing golf in the kingdom.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة السيدات والسادة يسعدنا أن نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب في مملكة البحرين معربين عن سعادتنا باستضافة بطولة دي بي وورلد تور بحرين تشامبينشيب للجولف والتي تعد ضمن سلسلة بطولات الجولف الاحترافية تعد لعبة الجولف واحدة من الألعاب التي كانت ولا زالت تحظى بدعم ورعاية حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظ الله ورعاه ويعتبر جلالته أحد الممارسين والمحبين لهذه الرياضة وهو ما يعكس اهتمام جلالة الملك المعظم بدعم الرياضة والرياضيين فهو الرياضي الأول في مملكة البحرين ويسرنا أن نعلن لكم اليوم عن رعاية جلالة الملك المعظم حفظ الله ورعاه لبطولة دي بي وورلد تور بحرين تشامبينشيب ونتشرف بهذه الرعاية الملكية السامية للبطولة الدولية التي سيتنافس فيها نخبة من اللاعبين المحترفين على ملاعب النادي الملكي للغولف وكلنا ثقة بنجاح هذه البطولة في ظل التعاون والتكامل بين مختلف الجهات الأهلية والحكومية لأخراجها في أبهى صورة ونتطلع من وراء استضافة هذه البطولة لتعزيز مكانة البحرين وإبراز قدراتها في استضافة الأحداث الرياضية كما نود أن نعكس اهتمامنا بتطوير رياضة الغولف التي لطالما كانت علامة بارزة من خلال تحقيق العديد من الإنجازات والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله The GCC Ministers of Social Affairs and Social Development granted the Supreme Council for Women member and Injaz Bahrain Board of Directors Chairwoman Her Highness Sheikha Hassa bin Khalifa Al Khalifa the Social Work Pioneer Medal. Her Highness Sheikha Hassa was conferred the prestigious medal during the second ceremony to honor local social work pioneers in GCC countries held in Masqat Amman. The Minister of Social Development Usama Al Asfour received the medal on her behalf. On the occasion, Her Highness expressed pride in obtaining the top award in the name of Bahrain and affirmed that this honoring will be an impetus for exerting more creative efforts in the field of voluntary and social work in the service of the nation and citizens. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met with the Jordanian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign and Expatriate Affairs, Ayman Safadi, on the sidelines of the 78th session of the UN General Assembly. The two sides discussed the course of the historical fraternal relations and their growth and development at all levels under the directives of the two countries' leaderships. They also discussed ways to enhance bilateral cooperation and coordination at the political and diplomatic levels in all international forums to serve the interests of the two countries and exchange views in the most prominent regional and international issues of common concern. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Bulgaria, Maria Gabriel. They discussed the friendly relations between the two countries and ways to promote bilateral cooperation in the economic, trade and investment fields to serve mutual interest, in addition to discussing issues of common concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met the Council of the Presidents of the UN General Assembly, the Secretary General of the Council, Dr. Han Sung Su, and the Director of the UN Office of Counterterrorism, Dr. Jehangir Khan. Dr. Han Sung Su requested Dr. Zayani to convey his greetings and appreciation to His Majesty the King and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, wishing Bahrain and its people further progress and prosperity. He praised the meeting of His Majesty the King with the members of the Council of Presidents during their visit to Bahrain last March to participate in the meeting of the former Presidents of the Assembly. Dr. Zayani lauded the Council's efforts to promote the UN's role in the international arena. He noted the noble values included in the goals of the organization to promote international cooperation, maintain global peace and security, and achieve sustainable development for the benefit of the people of the world. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the Polish Minister of Foreign Affairs. They discussed the course of close cooperation between Bahrain and Poland and ways to develop them in various fields to more comprehensive levels that meet the interests of the two countries and people, in addition to discussing a number of topics and issues of common interest on the regional and international arenas. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met at the UN headquarters in New York. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Trade and Worship of Argentine, Santiago Cafiero. They reviewed the friendly relations between the two countries and ways of promoting and developing them to achieve mutual interests and benefit the two countries and peoples in addition to issues of common concern. The two ministers signed an MOU on political consultation to further advance their cooperation relations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade and Export Development of Grenada, Joseph Andal. They discussed the development of bilateral relations between the two countries and ways of promoting them in various economic, trade and development fields, in addition to discussing current issues of common interest on the regional and international arenas. The two ministers signed a joint statement on the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries to develop their friendly relations and bilateral cooperation to serve common interests. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Vice President of Gambia, Mohamed Jallo, and the two sides discussed the friendly relations between the two countries and ways to promote bilateral cooperation between the two countries at all levels to meet the common interests and benefit the two peoples in addition to a number of regional and international issues of common concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the CEO of the American Jewish Committee, Ted Duch, and a number of committee's members. They discussed the prospects for joint cooperation between Bahrain and the committee within the framework of the close historical relations between Bahrain and the U.S. and the objectives of the Abraham Accords. They also discussed cooperation and joint coordination between the two sides to promote the values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence and to spread peace, security, and regional stability for the benefit, development, and prosperity of the region, in addition to exchanging views on political developments in the region and issues of common interest. Labor Minister Jamil Hamidan headed the Bahraini delegation participating in the ninth meeting of the Committee of GCC Labor Ministers in Amman. The minister stressed that Bahrain's participation in this meeting affirms the Kingdom's keenness to support joint Gulf action and coordinate efforts among member states to improve Gulf labor markets and exchange successful experiences, especially with regards to plans for employing the national workforce and facilitating the transition of Gulf manpower between Gulf labor markets in accordance with their common principles. The minister noted the role of the meeting in activating and implementing the decisions issued by the Supreme Council in the field of labor and studying the development of legislative tools in the GCC countries to keep pace with developments in the labor field. The Minister of Works, Ibrahim Al-Hawaj, the Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan Tawfiqi, the Chairman of the Board of Directors at Yusuf bin Ahmed Kanu Company, Khalid Muhammad Kanu, signed an agreement to build Sharifa Kanu Arts Center in Muharraq. 
The minister stated that the center is within the Khan family support to the artistic, cultural, and social movement in Bahrain, praising the charity and humanitarian work of Yusuf bin Ahmed Khan company. Al Hawad said the ministry will support the center by supervising all stages of design and construction, adding that a competition will be announced where professionals can compete to present design and concept proposals for the center. Minister Tawfiqi held a strategic partnership with Yusuf bin Ahmed Khan company, which is considered one of the top socially responsible organizations in Bahrain. Khaled Mohammed Kano said their agreement underscores the company's interest in supporting artistic initiatives, recalling that the Sharifa Kano Art Center was the first of its kind in Bahrain. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, visited the headquarters of the National Health Regulatory Authority, the NHRA, where she learned about the authority's various programs and developmental initiatives, as well as the digital transformation programs in the field of licensing health institutions, professions, and medical devices to ensure the provision of high-quality health services. The Minister affirmed NHRA's vital role in developing various regulatory and supervisory procedures for health institutions in Bahrain. Dr. Jalila Hassan stated that NHRA is the main partner in the health system and plays a major role in applying many of health sector strategic goals. She noted NHRA's recent accreditation by the International Society for Quality in Healthcare, affirming that it comes in light of the authority's many achievements. For her part, the CEO of NHRA stated that the authority continues its strategy to monitor the application of health professions and service systems in Bahrain according to the best principles and standards. An implementation of the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, and under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the RHF delivered a shipment of aid to the victims of floods in Libya. The RHF Secretary General, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, praised the Royal Directors of His Majesty the King in sending the shipment of urgent humanitarian relief aid to the brothers in Libya. He also praised the support the Foundation receives from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime. Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. He also praised the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Nasser for the humanitarian work carried out by the RHF. Dr. Said stressed that the RHF has worked to prepare 40 tons of medical food and relief materials and shelter supplies to provide the basic and necessary needs of the brotherly Libyan people. To help them in these current circumstances, he added that Bahrain has undertaken many initiatives and efforts to support brothers and friends based on the fraternal relations that bind Bahrain and Libya, stressing that Bahrain stands with them in this humanitarian ordeal and helps them alleviate this painful affliction. Legal advisor to the Secretary General of the Libyan Red Crescent, Zubair al Ghariani, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for Bahrain's noble efforts and praised the bilateral relations. U.S. Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Stephen Bundy, held a roundtable discussion with representatives from local media to discuss the U.S. historic Bahrain Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement. The agreement comes to enhance cooperation across a wide range of areas from defense and security to emerging technology, trade and investment. It marks the latest development in the United States' close partnership with Bahrain and enduring commitment to the region in support of peace. Uh, the United States and Bahrain have a very... Uh, wide and deep bilateral relationship. We're very proud of that. Uh, we work with each other uh, starting from the point of view of respect and with great humility. And we seek to build the ties not only between our governments, but between our peoples. Uh, this agreement is a natural step in the way that we've built our relationship. So at the heart of it, there is a pledge that in order, in the face of threats or God forbid actual attacks, we will come together at the senior most levels of government to determine next steps. That is a significant commitment to one another. And so that's what this agreement really does in terms of the national security realm. In terms of the other two areas, uh, in, uh, with our focus on economic, trade, and commercial relations, uh, we will uh, work to uh, integrate our economies ever more closely. Again, uh, the COVID pandemic showed everyone that supply chains can be damaged quickly, and we want to work with our uh, close partners in order to provide strength and resilience to supply chains. 
And then also in the uh, emerging technology area, this is actually the first agreement the United States has ever done with another country that is specifically focused on emerging technologies mm -hmm. and ensuring uh, trusted vendors, trusted supply chains. I know it's an area of great interest to your government, to your private sector, and of course to the American one as well. I think there's a lot of possibilities for synergies and for growth in that area. The National Genome Center in Bahrain, in cooperation with the National Genome Center in the UAE, organized an introductory symposium on the Genome Project, which was held remotely. The center reviewed its goals, strategic plans, and ex existing projects, most notably the Bahraini Genome Program, which aims to collect 50,000 Bahraini genome samples by the end of 2023. In addition to the center's initiatives in the field of awareness and encouragement to participate in the national campaign and programs, this comes within the framework of enhancing cooperation between the two sides in the fields of supporting science, research, Research and genetic studies, in addition to reducing the spread of genetic diseases and activating personalized medicine by enhancing early genetic diagnosis of diseases and improving the use of medicine.